Hey guys, thanks for joining me again. Uh, today we are going to be building the ultimate tilt shift lens. And ultimate because ultimately it can go become a failure. I have no idea. Anyways, I'm going to be attempting to turn a Canon 50mm 1.8 uh, Mark II into a tilt shift lens uh, with a bellows mechanism. Um, I chose a Canon lens over the Nikon 50mm because I found that I preferred the bulky of the Canon version. Also, I'm going to hopefully uh, run the aperture. I was going to originally run the aperture manually. Uh, I was going to put a slot in here and then have a lever uh, covered in uh, velvet or whatever so it doesn't leak, uh, dust doesn't leak in it and run it manually because I don't want to always be using it wide open at 1.8. Um, however, I now think I'm going to attempt it to use the electronic uh, aperture um, gadget <laughs> and I can run the aperture from the body. Uh, this is going to be a little more difficult but uh, I think I can do it and let's find out if it's pos possible. If it's possible, that's super cool. So um, we are going to do that. Here's what you need. Damaged 50mm 1.8 Canon uh, Mark II. Make sure it's nice and damaged. Shock and strut boot kit. A skill saw. Razor blades or Zacto knives. Anything, don't really know. Shoe goo, uh, probably, who knows. Chances are some AC crazy glue. Zero size tip, uh, Phillips screwdriver. Hands. Probably a tiny little screwdriver, who knows. Fine wire. Soldering iron. Solder. Liquid flux, or any flux. A lens cleaning cloth. Possibly a whole bunch of other tools, if all else fails. Yeah. Hey guys, stay tuned, because this is the lens that we're going to be building, and it worked out extremely well. It actually worked out a little bit better than I thought it might. I thought it could be a disaster, or it could uh, work really well, and it works really, really well. I've now shot the lens for uh, a couple weeks. I did um, a couple commercial shoots, um, I think two weddings, and just some other stuff, I can't remember what. And um, anyways, it works really well. Uh, I'm actually super happy that I didn't do my research before. I don't recommend doing that, but uh, there was another guy who I just found. He tried doing the boot method and couldn't get to work and uh, ended up doing a tape method. You guys might have seen that. It's floating around on YouTube. His works, um, but uh, this is definitely, this is, this lens is awesome. It's just like, it, it ergonomically, I love it. You can grip onto this and you can just move it around. It's completely sealed. I also uh, will be hardwiring and a bunch of other things. Um, what else can I tell you? Okay, so I'll give you the uh, the part number because I realized that apparently uh, this boot, which I just uh, stumbled upon, really, I went to uh, Lord Co here in Canada, eh? and uh, they're like, "Oh man, I I think this boot would work perfect. Give this a go." And so they, I went to another town to buy it, and I think it was like fifteen dollars. Um, and uh, it just so happens they were bang on. It fits super perfect. You guys will see later in the video. It fits absolutely flawlessly. Um, so the boot, you guys will want this part number. Uh, so it's uh, Shock Mate uh, boot kit. Uh, apparently there's different colors, but I think black is probably the best because in case there might be, like you can get red. I, I've seen the red and it, I wonder if Light Leak would come in red through the side. Maybe give her a picture a bit of a tone. I just go black. Uh, what's up, you? Um, so, SA uh, 1997. I don't know if that's a year or what. Uh, it's manufactured in the uh, United States. And then 228. So, it's 28 84086. 
and I'll run the number and everything. Um, and so, I mean, we have this in Canada, Day, uh, but I'm sure you can order it from other where other places. Uh, I found it for I think I don't even remember. I think it was like fifteen dollars. I'm not sure, but maybe you can get it a bit cheaper as well. Uh, so that's the guy right there. This is the money boot. <laughs> Um, and then um, two things that at the end I would have done differently. Um, one is um, where you're going to see it later where you're cutting the mount off. Um, uh, so you have the mount piece which you're going to keep and keep using. Um, then where we cut it, basically we're cutting the lens in half. Where we cut the lens in half. Um, you're going to uh, have this kind of this, just the, uh, just just lens cut in half. So it's just the barrel, the barrel, sorry, the barrel of the lens, and it, it's kind of a, a sharp edge. And if I redid it again, I would probably take a file like this. You can get them in kits. Uh, this is like six six of them. Was this uh, Excel? It doesn't matter, but it's. They're, they're just kind of a small file in general. And I'd probably take a rounded one and I would, um, I wish I could show you something. Here's a filter. Um, actually, your lens can do better. So let's pretend that this is now cut lens in half. So I'd kind of file this so the edge is sh uh, kind of graduated instead of just being a sharp lip. Once you cut the lens off, you'll know what I mean. And so if it was like that, because the 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 green board in there um, um, with all the electronics it sometimes snags a little bit um, there a little it just snags a tiny bit but I think if it was sloped it would just run nicer so I mean it's hardly a problem I'm talking about tweaking it and perfecting it at this point because honestly this works absolutely amazing but um, if it was because sometimes when I really crank it I can feel it catch a little bit. I don't know if you can see that, it just catches a little bit. So, I mean, if you get to that point and you just, just, just maybe file it a little bit so it just kind of slopes in and won't catch so much. Um, and then, uh, the only other thing I would change is, um, I was trying to think of how to design this and I thought like a, a pin system, having pins in here so you can yank the pins out to remove the front element. Just because every lens eventually gets uh, dust in it, but this is completely sealed. It's going to be sealed with glue. So if you do get dust, there's no real way of getting this lens open again to clear the dust. And I have got probably two part. Uh, it's probably two. Like I mean, these are microscopic particles, but I got two particles. Um, and the only real way of getting them out now is to take the take all the glue out, and um, and then I can pull the element and uh, and then blow it out. Not a big deal, but I just don't feel like doing that. Um, I'd have to get a new zap strap, and it'll cost me a lot. <laughs> We're cheap. So, other than that, ugh, there's nothing. I honestly, I can't critique this lens in any other way other than catching, and I wish I could yank the elements sometimes. So, I got this lens for $10. Um, basically, what happened was the uh, front element popped out. Um, and they thought it was broken, um, so I actually put this back in, however, I got looking at the rest of the lens and, um, and there's other parts falling out, <laughs> uh, apparently. So they, they removed this or they lost it or something and then um, it looked like the ribbon was starting to tear. However, the ribbon was still working and I was able to run the autofocus and the, um, the aperture, so I know the aperture is still active. Um, but, uh, just, you know, there's another part, um, just, um, uh, playing with it and looking at it, the, the ribbon did eventually tear, so, uh, that's fine because I don't think it would have lasted long enough anyways, the way we're gonna make this into a bellows, uh, so it's good that it tore right away and I'm not gonna deal with it later having to remove it once I'm finished the lens and then replace it. So I'm actually gonna hardwire it. I'll show you how to tear into this thing. Uh, I'll use this as an example because it's got all the parts. But what you're gonna wanna do is just take a, a screwdriver and you're gonna undo this little screw here. And there's another one here. And this drops this um, 
electronic whatever thing. <laughs> and, um, and then what you're going to want to do is you'll actually push this down inside of the lens. Then you can actually get your screwdriver in here and pop this plate out. Okay, so I'm not going to do it to this lens because it's totally fine but that's what you're going to want to do to your lens to get it to look like this. <laughs> you're going to remove this. Um, what you can do is you can actually see it's it's actually taped on. So I've seen somewhere there's two pieces of small tape or dabs of glue or kind of stuff and this one is actually taped on so you can just get your fingernail or a screwdriver. They're kind of tight. They're super tight and you just peel this off and it's feels like you're gonna break it and I haven't broken one yet but um oh maybe this is two pieces I mean there there you can see you can see the tape so what you want to do is remove this first okay now you're gonna rotate the focus until you see there's a tab there's a tab that comes there and then now you can remove everything it should pull out and that tab is that right there. But this, I can actually sell this on eBay because uh, people, this this this, fo this ring is totally fine. It's not cracked, so I can actually sell this on eBay. So that's, uh, um, then it, let's pretend this was still in there. What you do is carefully pull this out. And the whole thing should just slide out. There. I'm gonna hardwire this right now and see if it works. If the automatic aperture works through this, uh, through hardwiring it, we are laughing. Now I wanted to get the seven, I think it's a seven strand um, harness kind of, like you get the rainbow harnesses. So it's got like all different colors and they're all fixed together as one strand, usually for like computers and things. Uh, no, I'm in a little town and I can't, I'd have to order something like that in. But um, I'm just going to use some black wire um, for now. I don't know what size this is. It's, I pulled it out of a computer or something years ago. I don't even remember. It was so long ago. But um, I'm going to use black and I'm going to then, I don't know, fix it together somehow, the seven strands. So I cut up seven pieces of wire. Um, and what we're going to do is, what I do is I just cut them and then I just twist the ends so they're nice and not fraying. Um, then we're going to use some flux. There's uh, like uh, paste flux and different stuff. I only have the liquid. And we're going to, uh, it's called tinning. You're going to tin the wire. Otherwise you'll solder for nine years and the solder will never stick onto the, um, the wire. So you need to tin the wire. I'm actually going to put a little flux in here just so I can dip it easier. All right, I just needed to get a clip to hold that. All right. Okay, so that's that. And my video is still recording that. So there we go. Now we need to get these off.
just to keep in mind how this order went, it was like this. There's a little tiny circle, and there's a little tiny circle there, so we know it went like this. Because we got to match these patterns um, where they linked onto.